Hello everyone and welcome to Momentum channel. My name is Mo and in this video we'll be talking about how I have earned over $3,200 in dividend income this month and how I've reinvested it all. Now, for those of you who've been following our journey here on Momentum Finance, you know that I have formed a portfolio investing in the stock market passively uh, through the power of uh, high quality index funds. And this portfolio consists of both dividend paying ETFs as well as some growth oriented funds. Um, all in all, uh, this portfolio currently sits at just over $400,000. And this past month, we've been managing to earn uh, the juiciest uh, months of our dividend income, uh, co close to over $3,200. And what we've done with it, we've actually invested it all, reinvested it, and bought more shares of high quality funds that we have in our portfolio. What we're going to do in this video, we're going to be disclosing all those dividend incomes that we've earned uh, this month. Uh, we'll be sharing what we've done with it, what uh, shares and funds we bought and what are the plans for this uh, portfolio moving ahead for the year 2023. Let's get into it. All right. So our portfolio mainly consists of a number of brokerage accounts. Majority of our funds are with Wealth Simple Trade. It's a Canadian brokerage account uh, that allows investors to buy and sell shares of Canadian stocks or ETFs at no charge. Uh, similarly, there's no commission when it comes to buying or selling funds from the U.S. markets. Uh, the only caveat to that is that there is a conversion fee or the conversion of the funds between Canadian to U.S. dollars. Given that our portfolio mainly consists of Canadian funds, uh, there's no fee whatsoever here. Our second uh, big broker account that we use uh, for our portfolio is Quetrade. We're going to be talking about it momentarily. All right, let's get into the details here. Uh, we have close to that $260,000 or so uh, invested through Wealth Simple Trade. Uh, the handful of funds that we have, mainly the ones are in our personal accounts that uh, I'm going to quickly walk you through it. For the sake of simplicity and ease of uh, move, uh, I'm just going to focus on the funds that we are um, kind of actively investing in. There are some funds, such as the one that you see here on the screen, like Real Matters. Uh, given that it's heavily down and we are not necessarily buying any more shares of it, we are not including it in our overall portfolio size. So if you include those funds, the total value of funds are going to be higher, but we have excluded them because we are not actively buying or selling uh, those shares at this time. Our biggest holding is actually with VDY, a Vanguard FTSE Canadian High Dividend Yield Index ETF. We have close to uh, 2064 shares of it in our non-registered account, but we have also shares of VDY in our registered account, including our tax-free savings account, TFSA account, as well as RRSP, Registered Retirement Savings Plan account that we have here. So if I click onto VDY, that shows us the total um, number of funds that we have across our all our accounts. You'd see um, the 2064 for our personal account, TFSA, we have close to 593, and RSP, we have close to 66 shares. And each one of the returns are shown as well here and the percentage of uh, those portfolio. If I go back, our second big holding uh, across our all accounts is VFE or Vanguard S&P 500 Index DF. Uh, with VFE, unlike VDY, the focus is more so on the growth perspective, whereas with VDY that we talked about, there the focus is more so on dividend. And as the name suggests, through VDY, you're getting exposure to close to that 50 top high quality dividend paying Canadian stocks, whereas with VFE, um, you're not uh, focused more so on dividend and a lot more on growth. Through VFE, you're getting exposure to 500 largest US companies that are kind of part of the Standard & Poor's 500 index. VFE does pay a slight distribution dividend, but it's paid on a quarterly basis. Whereas with VDY, those dividend distributions are paid on a monthly basis. Uh, with VFE, if I click onto it, you'd see we also hold, hold shares through our tax-free savings account as well as our RRSP accounts as well. Uh, following that, uh, our next big holding that we have here through Wealthsimple is our shares that we have with uh, XEF. Uh, it's a BlackRock Canada iShares Core MSCI East and Far East um, Index ETF. Gives us exposure to the international markets. We have only 634 shares of it here and only it's in our non-registered personal account. This is currently showing to be up by 7%. Our next big holding here, following it closely, is V or Vanguard FTSE Emerging Markets. As the name suggests, we are getting exposure to the markets in the emerging world. 
this is the only place where we have all these shares. We have currently 601 shares of it, which is up by 6.4%. Uh, with V, you are getting that dividend distributions of around 3.14%, which is paid out uh, ultimately uh, divided uh, on a quarterly basis. Whereas with XEF, those funds are, the dividends are paid on a biannual basis. And lastly, we have another big holding here, XIC. It's still a, a relatively smaller compared to many other holdings. Uh, we have 201 shares of it, XIC, which is BlackRock, iShares Core, uh, S&P, Toronto Stock Exchange, Capped Composite Index ETF. With XIC, we get exposure to pretty much virtually the entire Canadian stock market, not just the dividend-paying stocks um, that VDY is focused on. Here's more so the entire exposure to the Canadian stock market. We have 201 shares of it in our non-registered account and 10 shares of it in our registered retirement savings plan, as you notice here on the screen. Now, for those of you who've been following our past videos, you know that we have another big fund in our mix, and that's VEQT, V Equity, uh, which is our Vanguard all in, in one and exchange traded funds. And that one is the one that we've been chosen as the, our Smith Maneuver portfolio. And it, this that's the one that we have with Quest Trade. So I'm going to quickly walk you through that one as well. Currently, you see the total value of investment with VEQT is $89,022. Uh, this is an entire amount here put into this portfolio. Some of it is available in cash, around $80 or so. As you notice, $83 is still available in cash, which is available for us to buy in terms of the fund. Uh, we currently have 2,647 uh, shares of V. EQT uh, at an average price of $35.81, given the last trading price of $33.60. Um, this fund is actually going to be showing to be down by about just 6%. Um, definitely some improvements compared to a few months ago. And this is really thanks to the good start to the year that we've seen uh, in the stock market. If you look at, for instance, the past 15 days, you see how the value of the funds has grown from 83600 to now close to 89,000, the last one month, three months, six months, and the one year, um, how things have changed. Of course, we've continuously added more funds to this account. This is not showing necessarily the performance of EQT, but rather the performance of this fund uh, and portfolio that we have here. Um, as for the dividend income, I've talked to you all about the dividend funds that we've received this month, over 3,200. I want to be more specific and walk you through it exactly uh, what happened and what we've done with it. For our Wealth simple account, a Wealth simple trade account, uh, we received closer to that 1,200 dividend income for uh, myself. And for my wife, we received close to that $250 in dividend income. Uh, you notice majority of these dividend incomes came from our shares of VDY. It's a monthly paying dividend, and actually we have the largest exposure to it. Uh, we did receive as well some in dividends for VFE, V, uh, as well as shares some dividends from XIC, XEF, uh, along the mix. We did receive some additional dividends, if you notice, from here and there, some funds that we have, but those are not the ones that we actively buy and share any, buy or sell anymore, and that's why we are not keeping them in our portfolio that we report up. Uh, our focus of the portfolio is merely on those seven funds that we talk, have talked about uh, to you uh, here. In terms of what we've done with these funds, in terms of our buys, because we've not really sold any in the past uh, several weeks, mainly we've used those funds, uh, repurposed them and bought more shares of all these other seven funds that we've talked about. BFE, XIC, XEF, V, VDY. We did buy some sh uh, fractional shares of Shopify. We wanted to take advantage of dollar cost averaging because we have some shares of Shopify, but those are again, not very active. That's why we don't really report on them um, as much. Um, for those who have again been following our portfolio, you know that we did have some shares of Bank of Nova Scotia, which was down quite a bit, uh, almost double digit. We took advantage of the declines in the market, add more shares of Bank of Nova Scotia to our portfolio. And that really helped to bring down our cost average. Still, the plan is to sell the shares of Bank of Nova Scotia, as soon as uh, we get a chance to, uh, you know, hit that kind of uh, the average purchase price and so that we can sell it actually at some sort of profit, not really at a loss. We did also buy some shares of QQC.F, um, which gives exposure to NASDAQ in Canadian dollars. 
Uh, we haven't really been reporting on it actively because uh, the, the shares that we have there is more so on the side and have been the, the positions that we have there has been there for a long while and we are not actively adding. We really bought these shares to bring our dollar, uh, take advantage of dollar cost averaging and bring our average cost down because we were at a double digit negative as well for QQCF. Those have been really the major buys as I'm scrolling down that you notice uh, the, the shares that we bought, mainly those top seven funds that we have in our uh, accounts. I'm going to move back now to our shares with um, Questrade. Uh, you you might notice that there has been a huge jump in the number of our VQT funds. We used to be on the 2,500 uh, kind of range, and now we are on the 2,647. Uh, the way that this has happened is that we had set up our account so that automatically any dividend that we receive from Questrade is reinvested for this VQT. And in this case, if I go back and show you the account activity, you notice that for uh, this account in particular, uh, what happened is that uh, we did receive a total dividend in distribution in amount of uh, $1,742, $1,742.42. Uh, this was paid to us based on the dividend of $0.67 cents per share. Based on the shares that we had, we at the time, based on 2,591 shares that were eligible for dividend, we received this total amount. And then the, the same day, uh, this amount was repurposed and reinvested, uh, bought us some shares of um, the VQT at the average price of $32.95, managed to buy us automatically 52 shares of VQT. That's how this amount was added to our existing shares of VQT. So really our goal is, uh, as you're noticing, to reinvest the funds that we get in terms of our distributions month in and month out. We reinvest, repurpose that and buy more shares of these high quality funds because currently we are in the phase whereby we want to accumulate as much as possible that wealth. We want to make sure that we invest as much as possible of our savings and let it uh, have enough time to grow uh, in the years to come. This is really the phase that we want to accelerate uh, at the growth of our portfolio. Uh, hence, reusing all of those dividends and repurposing it to buy more shares. Um, Maybe in, in several years, once we get to the next phase, let's say the phase of early retirement and whatnot, that's the phase that potentially we start thinking of, okay, how can we use now our dividend income to perhaps fund some of our costs or maybe even have to sell some of our existing shares. But we are not there yet. We are um, uh, several years definitely away from that stage in our portfolio uh, kind of lifespan. And that's why we want to make sure we uh, make all those uh, you know, smart decisions um, to make sure that our portfolio continues to grow, to make sure that our portfolio has enough, you know, fuel to uh, to accelerate its growth and really get to larger uh, position. 2022, as we know, was not the greatest year for the stock market. We believe that 2023, hopefully, things are gonna, uh, you know, change and are gonna be um, a different year. Definitely, hopefully, this year is gonna be a different year for us. But e even if that doesn't pan out to be the, the case, uh, we're not gonna panic. In fact. Any year that the stock market does poorly, it's a wonderful opportunity for investors with a longer term horizon, those who are here for the long uh, long shot, to really take advantage of that, buy shares of those high quality funds or stocks or ETFs at discounted prices compared to what they have been typically uh, traded for. So we are not worried about that. In fact, we really, really have been welcoming those poor stock market, though I'm not going to lie. The start of the year in 2023 has been really a remarkable start, and it's nice to see your portfolio uh, finally in a positive um, territory. I'm going to also sh share with you at a high level where our portfolio stands. As we have talked about, these are the seven main holdings that we have in our portfolio, VDY, VFE, VEQT, XEFV, and XIC. Back on North Scotia, we still have some shares. I'm adding, adding more shares, but ultimately, after it hits that positive territory, uh, the goal is to really unload that and use those funds to buy more shares of existing funds. The major reason behind it is that Bank of Nova Scotia is already uh, available in uh, at least two or three of these uh, funds that we have here. And specifically in VDY, we, there's a large portion of weightage is uh, allocated to Bank of Nova Scotia, as well as with XIC, which is another Canadian ETF. I believe we get some exposure to, to that through um, some other funds, potentially through VQT, um, but uh, don't quote me exactly on that. I can't exactly recall. Uh, but those, even those two funds alone are sufficient for us to offload our shares of Bank of Nova Scotia and buy more shares of um, the rest of these funds. Currently, the way that this portfolio stands, as you notice, majority of our funds are in, now in the positive territory. 
<laughs> Bank of Nova Scotia is negative uh, of 2.9 and VEQT is down by 6.2. But other than that, everything else is in positive territory. Our portfolio is now back into positive range. You notice here overall return for the portfolio is up by 1.4% or up $5,700. This portfolio currently has a cost basis invested amount of 401 thousand one hundred sixty seven dollars and the market value for this portfolio is currently sitting at four hundred and six thousand nine hundred fifty two dollars as for the expected dividend income for this portfolio if you look at it uh, the average dividend uh, amount expected annually for this portfolio is at eleven thousand one hundred forty three dollars and the, uh, that translates to an average equally uh, distributed a monthly dividend inc amount of $929. You, of course, saw how January was a different month. We earned almost $3,200. That's because every single one of these funds does pay its dividend in the, in the month of January. Um, some pays on a quarterly basis, as you notice, like January, March, June, September, and whatnot. But January is the one month that every single one of them pays us a dividend. That's why you know, historically, you can expect January to be one of our greatest months when it comes to the the amount of dividend received. March would be probably another one that we can expect to get another high level of dividend, not as much as January, but potentially another nice one. And so is April. As you notice, there are two funds um, here that pays in April, as well as the one month, one fund that we have every single month, like VDY. Uh, that's one of the ones that we, we love uh, so much about it. This total dividend amount uh, equates to approximately $31 dividend per day, which is just amazing. Like I said, dividend is not the, on the only way that we, we see this portfolio growing, but it's always nice to see your dividend amount growing as well. In terms of the exposure by geographical breakdowns, we have a set a target of 40% exposure to Canada, 40% to US, and 20% internationally. Currently, based on these holdings and the number of shares we have, our exposure is about 51% to can Canadian markets, 33% to US markets, and 16% to international. What our focus will be in the weeks to, uh, to come is to try to get closer to that target exposure breakdown that we have here. And, and we will continue to provide an update how that happens. Well, there you have it, folks, an in-depth review into our portfolio, investing in the stock market through Wealth Simple Trade and Quest Trade uh, in terms of both investing in dividend uh, funds as well as growth funds, uh, passively through the power of exchange traded funds. Uh, the one thing that you'd notice about this portfolio is how simple it is. It really takes the guest game out of the, um, this equation. You don't need to do a ton of research, really investing indirectly in the stock market through these high quality uh, passive income uh, ETFs, uh, which anybody can do it. Um, I hope you, it provided you some inspiration to see how uh, you know investing in the stock market in the long term can really pay off and how it can really uh, provide a great way for wealth accumulation, for wealth generation, and really helping you reaching that financial independence and financial freedom uh, in the years to come. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please uh, don't forget to smash that like button and uh, follow our channel here on Momentum Finance. We post uh, every week uh, videos about investing, investing in the stock market, real estate, and crypto. We talk about ways to reach financial freedom. If you also have any questions or any comments, I would love to hear from you. I will read through each and every single comment and uh, take the time to respond to them. Uh, it would be really greatly appreciated. And uh, I look forward to reading your thoughts and your plans to reaching financial freedom in the comment section. Uh, as always, I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you all next time here on another video on Momentum Finance.